Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today, we're going to be taking a look at this old Heathkit vacuum tube uh, voltmeter from around the 1960s. And we're going to see if we can get it to function again. So, let's dive right in. So one thing that I thought was really cool about this is that it still came in the box that it shipped from in the factory, the old heat kit box. So if we take a look at the underside of this box, you can see something kind of interesting. All these staples that hold it together are all rusted, and it's a little bit moldy down here. Shows how old this box is. Another kind of interesting thing is right here we have a symbol for the Union Pacific Railroad. And this kind of gives some specifications for how this is supposed to be shipped. So. I thought that's pretty cool. Now if we take a look at the voltmeter itself, it looks to be in great condition. So let's plug it in and see how well it works. When I turn it on, you can see that this little light on the top starts glowing. And as you can see now, nothing's happening to the needle. Oh, until now, it's went to the start and then back down. I guess that is a sign that the tubes are almost fully warmed up. Okay, this is interesting. Now that it's fully warmed up, if I touch the probes together, you can see that the multimeter does not show that there's zero ohms in this connection. The needle barely moved. When you short this, it, the needle should move all the way to the other side to show that there are zero ohms here. So that part of the multimeter is not working properly. It is now connected to a power supply of five volts. And as I have it set on five volts right now, this needle should be in the position where it's at the very end because it's at the 5 volt spectrum. So this needle should be right here at 50. And it just went down. So that's a problem as well because it's still connected. That's very strange. If I turn it up and back down again, hmm. let's open this up and try and fix it. As you can see, when I open this up, we can see a couple of different components in here. We see we have a 12 AU7 vacuum tube. This is a dual triode. We also have a 6 AL5, which is a dual rectifier. You can also see we have a pretty old electrolytic capacitor, which could be causing some problems. We have a really old flashlight battery. This is a 1.5 volt battery that's used for the resistance setting of this multimeter. And this battery is very old, so it's probably gone bad. It's also interesting to note that we have a semiconductor diode in here as part of the power supply. It's interesting to see that in a device this old. This may have gone bad as well. You may not be able to see it because of the lighting here, but the filaments and these tubes are both on and glowing brightly, which means that at least that part is good. So right now I'm going to try and pull this ancient battery out. Now this battery could be causing some problems with the resistance section of this meter, but the battery would not be causing problems with the other parts of it, because this is only used for the resistance section. You know, I'm kind of curious to see how many volts are still in this battery, see what charge it still has. Oh my goodness, this is insane. If you look at that screen, it says it's 1.437 volts. It's crazy that this battery still has that full charge in it. These batteries typically come at 1.5 volts, but it's crazy to see how this thing still has 1.4 volts. That's awesome. Even though this battery still has uh, 1.4 volts in it, it probably can't hold that voltage when you put any kind of load across it. And this battery is also corroding a little bit as well. So I'm going to replace this with a more modern C-cell battery. I'm going to remove the circuit board to look underneath it. One problem that I assume could be happening in here could be that some of the solder points on the bottom of the board have cracked over the years and need to be resoldered. So to remove this board, I took out this bolt right here, as well as the two nuts that were attaching the legs of the meter to the circuit board. So with those taken off, the whole board can be lifted up and slid out. Maybe. 
So I have this board taken out and the multimeter. I also have to remove this little metal bracket, which is pretty easy. There were just two bolts holding it in place. So we have the board here. And we have the underside, which has a lot of different solder joints on that. So real quick, I'm going to go through and I'm just going to reheat these solder joints with the soldering iron and so they will melt and form again. So in case there were any cracks in these joints, they will be reformed together. It's typically a pretty simple process to do this. Now on some of these joints, you may have to add a little bit of extra solder to help them out a little bit. You especially want to get these joints to look shiny again. Now that I have all the solder joints reheated, so any potential cracks in the solder are fixed, I'm now going to replace this old electrolytic capacitor. As you can see here, at 16 microfarads at 150 volts DC. So how I'm going to replace this is I have two of these capacitors. Each one of these is 10 microfarads at 220 volts. If I put these in parallel, that equals a 20 microfarad 200 volt capacitor which shouldn't be perfect for this. Okay, so you didn't see this because I didn't have the camera rolling, but I desoldered this capacitor and I decided to touch this lead and this lead at the same time. And this capacitor seemed to have been charged when I took it out. So I got a big shock on my hand, but that's just the perks of using a vacuum tube circuit. These new filter capacitors are installed and it looks good. Now the next thing I'm going to switch out is this old diode here. Now this diode may work or it may not, but because it's so old I think it's still safe just to replace it with this similar diode. On a website that I found that cross-references different Heathkit part numbers to different parts today, I found that this diode right here can be cross-referenced to a modern day 1N4005 which is a general purpose rectifier diode. And this diode that I found in something else is an RL205, which is very similar to the 1N4005. So I will just desolder this and reinstall this diode and we'll see what happens. It's just really crazy to see how parts have gotten smaller over the years. It's pretty cool to see. But now that this is all done, I have these parts installed. I'm going to put this back together and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, then we'll keep looking and trying to find the reason why it doesn't work. All right, I'm really happy because this multimeter is working very well now. So I've got a 1K resistor. If I put it across the test leads, you can see that the needle goes down to 0.1. Now this knob for the selector is on times 10K. So 0.1 times 10K is 1,000 ohms. Perfect. I move the selector knob down here. The needle rests on 1. And this is times 1,000. So the 1 times 1,000 is 1K. If I move it here to times 100, you can see that it's on 10. 10 times 100 is 1,000 ohms. Now, although the needle is a little bit off, I can fix that by adjusting some potentiometers in the back. Now let's try it on DC voltage. So right now I'm set to DC volts and I have it connected to my power supply. You can see that my power supply is on 1.5 volts. You can see that the needle is at the very end at 15. And we have this on the 1.5 volt scale. And so this is showing us exactly 1.5 volts. If I switch this to the 5 volt scale, you can see that it's on 15 down here which means exactly 1.5 volts. If I increase the voltage to 2 volts, the needle lands directly on 2. So we can see that this multimeter is now working well. Let me switch this to the 15 volt scale. You can see that when I put it at 10 volts, 10 volts here lines up with 10 volts there. If I set it to 15 volts, that lines up as well, which is perfect. When measuring 18 volts, we can see that it works well. I'll have my variac turned up, and I'll set my variac to 50 volts. You can see that it's very close to 50 volts right there. 
So you can see that the AC is working well, which means the vacuum tube that is able to rectify this voltage is working well. Now to fine tune the voltage adjustment on this vacuum tube voltmeter, I'm first going to set this to the 15 volt range. I'm going to set my power supply to exactly 15 volts. Now, before I do that, I'm also going to use this knob to zero it. So this needle is exactly at zero. Now when I hook this up, you can see that the needle moves, and you may not be able to see it well from the perspective of this camera, but it's not completely aligned. Now I can go back here and I can adjust these little knobs to completely fine tune the needle. So that way this is a precision instrument. Perfectly tuned. Always keep in mind when you're adjusting things that are at high voltage potential to use a screwdriver that's insulated. That'll keep things more safe. Wow, this is precise. I have exactly 8 volts AC coming out of my variac, which that voltmeter is reading. And here, this needle is exactly on 8. So this vacuum tube voltmeter is now calibrated and working great. Alright, now that we've finished fixing that vacuum tube voltmeter, I'm going to take you on a quick tour of the schematic, because I think it's interesting. So down here we have the most basic section of the circuit. This is the power supply. The electricity comes in from the wall, goes through a switch, and then goes to this power transformer. On one side of the power transformer you can see that it will supply 6.3 volts AC to the filaments of the vacuum tubes and to the pilot light. On the other side of the transformer, well, it will supply around 120 volts AC. So we can see that the ratio from the primary coil to the secondary coil is the same. This voltage is then rectified by a diode and a capacitor, both of which we replaced. That rectified AC current then goes to a voltage divider, which is responsible for providing a voltage offset for the AC measurement part of the circuit. But then the full voltage then goes up here to the plate to the 12IU7 vacuum tube. Now this is an interesting way of measuring voltage with this vacuum tube set up in this configuration. So what's happening here is we have one grid that is grounded through a 10 mega ohm resistor, so it's at one potential, creating a constant current from the plate to the cathode and then coming down here. And then this grid is going to be a variable potential, and this potential is dependent on what resistor we're measuring on the resistance side, or perhaps what AC voltage we're measuring, or what DC voltage we're measuring, which will create a variable current flowing between the plate and the cathode of this side of the vacuum tube. Now between the cathode and ground, we have different resistors. Between this cathode and ground, we have a 150K resistor. This cathode and ground, we have a 220K resistor. Now but depending on the position of the switch, this part of the cathode will be connected through one of these potentiometers to the meter, and the meter will flow directly to the other cathode. Now what is happening here is because the cathode flows through a resistor but before going to the negative part of the power supply, it's going to create a potential at each cathode. And so this meter is basically measuring the voltage between these two cathodes, the difference in their current, which I think is a really cool way of measuring this because it allows for a very high impedance input and it allows for the meter to be controlled with quite a bit of precision. So now going over to this part of the circuit, this is the part of the circuit that supplies the voltage to the grid of this vacuum tube. We can see that when we have this set to AC, it'll go through these different switches before eventually making it through this 1600 volt filter capacitor before going into the 6AL5 rectifier tube. Then the output of that is put through a offset voltage before eventually making it down to these resistors right here. This is a voltage divider network that will divide the voltage you put in based off what the switches are set to. And then that voltage eventually comes through some more switches before eventually making it to the input of this vacuum tube. And the same thing happens with the DC voltage. With the exception that the DC voltage doesn't go through this part of the circuit, it goes directly to these resistor divider network before going into the vacuum tube.
Now when it comes to measuring resistance, we have a separate voltage divider network. And what happens here is we have the 1.5 volt battery, which I actually replaced. And that current from the battery will flow through this voltage divider network before eventually going through the resistor you're trying to test before making it back to the input of this vacuum tube. So depending on what selection you make on here, you'll select the range of the resistor you're trying to measure. This is a pretty cool schematic. So now what caused this meter to malfunction so badly at the start of this video? Now it could have been the capacitor or it could have been the diode, but one thing that I really think it was comes from the solder connections. So this is an interesting part that I found while reading the manual. It says it is interesting to note that about 90% of the kits that are returned for repair do not function properly due to poor connections and soldering. Therefore, many troubles can be eliminated by reheating all connections to make sure they are soldered as described in the proper soldering technique section of this manual. That is very interesting. So a lot of these kits seem to have been returned because people didn't solder the connections properly. And because of those little cracks, the circuit didn't work as intended. So when I reheated all those soldering connections, any cracks that may have been in the soldering connections were fixed and restored proper connectivity to the whole system. Now these pieces of solder could have just cracked due to many years of sitting in a box in the heat, especially here in California, or they could have been soldered badly from the beginning. But anyways, it works again, which I'm really happy about. Well. It's so now finished, you can see the vacuum tube voltmeter is sitting up here right next to my oscilloscope. So this will be used in projects when I need to measure two different voltages. I can measure one voltage on my digital multimeter, and I can measure the other voltage on my vacuum tube voltmeter. But for now, thank you for watching, and stay tuned for next time. Have a good day!